Okay, class, welcome back to World Literature. Let's see if we got all the settings right here. I think we do. Yeah, everything's all right. All right. <clears throat> class, I sent you out a memo uh, recently that said I'll post a lecture this weekend <clears throat> that will discuss what you need to prepare for our conferences. We're going to talk about that now. In the meantime, <clears throat> continue to read and digest Jonathan Swift in our textbook, including a modest proposal. Class, that's his, one of the great essays ever written about um, the English um, was satire about uh, uh, send up on the Irish, which starts on page. Once again, 332, you are responsible for the entire Swift section, Jonathan Swift, which runs from 282 to 337. And then it says, class, here's wishing you a, a great weekend. Okay, we're going to help you with that now and talk about how we're going to get caught up with some delays and everything. Um, class... I'm going to have a, let's talk about this oral presentations and work through this class. Uh, and we'll, we'll take care of this right now. It says that on page two of the course policies and calendar, it says during the semester, each student will make a 15 to 20 minute oral presentation to the class on an author or work we will discuss during that period. So what we're talking about is that period of class, all right, that period of class. So if we look, starting once again on March 27th, there's going to be oral presentations that a student is going to make, uh, record over YouTube and then send it to me and send it to the whole class. That's how that's going to work. So on the 10th, Anton Chekhov and oral presentations. So we're going to talk about that the way uh, that is certainly going to work out. Week 10, March 27th to the 31st. So. I'm going to send or have sent to you or will send to you when I send this video <clears throat> what's called an oral presentation sign-up sheet. And that's right here. You will receive this. Okay. And this has slots for every student can make a, a oral presentation. You have to decide what you want to do. And when you pull this up, you can look at, over all these possibilities. There's a slot for everyone in our class. During that time, on once again, March 27th to 31st, you will turn in, during those times, an oral presentation. And then I will post those. You'll... Turn those in to the class, uh, turn it in to me, and I'll post it to our entire class, and I'll watch it, and all of us will watch it individually. Somebody will be able to make a presentation that day called Anton Chekhov, a biography, all right? So a biography of Anton Chekhov, you want to look at these titles for these oral presentations exactly as they are. Biography is where you talk about Chekhov's life. You go into it. You make a 15 to 20 minute oral presentation on that. I'll go into me more details in a minute on what it will include. Or someone will have the opportunity to make a oral presentation on his monumental play of Russia, The Cherry Orchard. All right. So you read the cherry orchard, digest it, do research on the cherry orchard, 
make an oral presentation that you will upload to, uh, through YouTube to me, 15 to 20 minutes. Check off short stories and fiction. Once again, that'd be focusing the oral presentation on his short stories and fiction, if you wish. All of these are a deep dive into these topics. Or Chekhov's influence on modern Russia. Fantastic, once again. How did he play in, you take a title like that and you run with it, how did he play into modern Russia, once again? What's going on with Chekhov and modern Russia? Class, Chekhov, Anton Chekhov, recent scholarship. Finally a presentation. So right there. We got five presentations, a possibility on checkoff. You can pick one of any of these class. Any of these we're going to talk about right now. <coughs> so, excuse me, class. Anton Chekhov, recent scholarship. In that would include recent books, recent essays, discoveries possibly in regards to the world of the scholarship and study of the great, once again, Russian Anton Chekhov. So, March 20. Now, if we look down here on our course policies and calendar, right, the next week is Franz Kafka and oral presentations, the 5th through the 7th. So, you can look at that, do a little research, decide, hey, I want to learn more about Kafka, and then give us an oral presentation. Franz Kafka. His legendary work, you could make an oral presentation, a research project, The Metamorphosis, all right? Dig deep into that fine piece of literature, The Metamorphosis. Franz Kafka, also, here's your title, Historical Perspectives. So, talk about Kafka and how he was influenced by history, okay? How history influenced him, influenced his writing, historical perspective, how history shaped the man and who he was as a writer. Class, Kafka, Franz Kafka, recent scholarships, like just discussed with Chekhov. What's going on in the field of Kafka scholarships? What books have been written? What new discoveries are there? You're going to let us know. Class, Kafka and language and the historical view. So Kafka and his relationship, once again, to language and historical view. Where is it? Where does it set? In regards to history, another four presentation. So class, you need to pick one of these as we go through this. Sign up for it, once again. On the sign up date. Here, I'm going to send this to you, and then you will start your presentation class. April 12th through 14th, we go to our course policies and calendar. Virginia Woolf, we'll be looking at. Oral presentations in regards to Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf, a biography. The great English writer, Virginia Woolf. Once again, an important, important modernist. Challenging to read, but she sticks in one's mind, or can, certainly has in mind, once again. Virginia Woolf, a biography. Virginia Woolf, A Woman's Progress. That could be the title, once again. She was writing in a time where she suffered in some ways for being a woman. Made a lot of progress as a woman. Committed suicide as a woman. Heavy writer, heavy modernist. Always signed everything when she signed books. And you can find them on uh, eBay and the different literary sites for sale. They're, they cost a lot of money. She signed everything in a fountain pen class. But she signed everything in what was called her classic uh, purple ink. Virginia Woolf would only write and use class purple ink. In this, I have uh, some uh, Tassia from Japan uh, denim. A, 
denim blue ink once again. But everything from Virginia Woolf was signed in, in purple ink in this, uh, <clears throat> in that uh, pen from Shanghai, and, and <clears throat> this from Chicago. Everything in here is uh, loaded with a coral ink. So fascinating. Wolf class. Virginia Wolf biography. Virginia Wolf, somebody can make a presentation called A Woman's Progress. And Virginia Wolf, a room of one's own, <coughs> where she advocates that a person needs, a woman needs a room of her own class once again to write in, to become a writer. <coughs> to have that space where a person can write class. And then want another Virginia Woolf, some debate. What do the critics say are her most acclaimed work? Once again, class. Virginia Woolf. Once again, four more possibilities for presentations. Class, the same thing. April 19th to 21st as we look to our course policies and calendar. We look to our course policies and calendar. Betty Smith on here that I'll send you that you'll have when you watch this video, a biography. Betty Smith, her great book, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Betty Smith on language and place. Betty Smith, recent scholarship. So look over these. Pick out what you want to do, class. Pick out what you want to do. Now, um, and then finally, our we got some time here. We got April 26th to 28th. The great Native American writer Leslie Marmon Silco in her world. Someone will have that opportunity to make a presentation. Yellow Woman presentation. Leslie Marmon Silco today. That would be talking about scholarship in regards to her, where she is today, what's going on with that field of study. And then into once again class, a few presentations. James Baldwin, Notes of a Native Son. Still reverberating today what James Baldwin wrote about. James Baldwin in history. How he was influenced by the times. The great African American writer James Baldwin. How he still reverberates through history. And then we'll finish up with Salman Rushdie, a biography. Salman Rushdie, recent scholarship and work. I just pulled up from about a year ago <clears throat> a uh, copy of the New Yorker. <clears throat> and they had a new short story by him. Salman Rushdie, right? New short story by him in the New Yorker about a year ago. Class, so that's it. Look through these. Pick one of these. Sign up for it. Don't worry about anyone else signing up for the same thing because I'm not going to have you do a ton of um, research, but some. And then I can make this work for everybody. Okay? Everybody. If something happens where there's two people choosing the same thing, don't worry about that. I'll help you out. I'll make it work. I've been doing this for a lot of years. So, that's where we are in regards to the oral class presentations and what we are doing there. Now, if we go back to the course policies and calendar, I want to tell you when I want you to send in your pitch. But first, let's go back over the directions, class. Oral presentations on page two. During the semester, each student will make a 15 to 20 minute oral presentation to the class on an author or work we will discuss during that period. So by that period, I mean that week, right? Of how we just laid out and talked about these for 15 minutes. And so you will have it ready during those due dates. The student's presentation might Class, be limited to, on page two, I'm reading off of this. I'm illuminating this right now. The student's presentation might be limited to the writer's impact on history, cultural, literary trends, 
in his or her or her period. Might, that's something you could do. Writer's impact on history. Cultural or literary trends in his or her period. Or a comparison and contrasting of the author's works and motives within and across periods of time. And so that's a lot in one sentence. Take this class, when I'm talking about these directions, highlight it, underlight it, read it, annotate it, highlight it, low light it, read it, annotate it, highlight it, low light it, read it, annotate it. It's very condensed. And study these directions as best as you can, class. Might. Choose to explain key elements of the lives and art of individual writers or analyze the works in there. Once again, in addition, here we go. The student might choose to explain another might. Key elements of the lives and art of individual writers. So I'm giving you some freedom here to figure out how you want to do it. In addition, the student might choose to explain key elements of the lives and art of individual writers or analyze the works in their historical or universal context. Okay. So analyze the works in regards to their universal context. I mean, historical context first. Okay. How does the work fall into the scheme of history. Histor how did history shape the work? Did it shape the work once again? How did was the work shaped by politics? Okay, all coming into a historical perspective. How was maybe it influenced by psychology? Psychology being mirrored by history, by politics, by art class. These are all things that we learn to do when we become college students, okay? We see how the overlapping happens once again. History, politics, art, literature, psychology, sociology, right? That's the great thing about being in college. We take these classes and we start seeing, once again, how it all interrelates all those subjects I just mentioned, class, once again, how it all relates, how it all intertwines, class. In addition, the student might choose to explain key elements of the lives and art of individual writers or analyze their works in their historical and universal context. We talk about universal context, we're talking about things like happiness thinking about things like suffering. We're thinking about things like possibly the search for God or maybe not the search for God. The search in the realm of secularism. The search in the world of non-secularism. What does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a woman? Can men and women truly find or find it all class once again happiness uh, in the world what does it mean to be happy universal <coughs> questions right fantastic that gives you a lot of leverage class that you can do here when you make these presentations or analyze the works in their historical and universal context and then it tells us, class, here, each presentation, however, however, each presentation, however, will, so this is something that you must do, will include a brief biography of the writer and will be graded partially on the effectiveness of the presentation. 
class. Although props aren't required, students are encouraged to use them if their presentations will benefit from them. So class, I, you know, once again, you want to keep us awake. If I'm going to watch your YouTube video, I want to be awake, class. I don't want to be put to sleep. I've had students in the old days, or maybe not the old days, but over Zoom and over YouTube. And in class, when this class was completely in class, in the classroom only, class students will dress up in character. Students will use music. Students will use aspect of uh, visual presentations. Students will use images. Students will um, do light shows. Anything to keep the reader awake. One time I had a student, I'll never forget, we were doing a presentation on, um, oh, this is a long time ago, but sometime it, tied into birth and birth control in an author's work and I had the student pass out condoms to the class. I didn't pass them out. The student said, Mr. Welsh, was it okay to? I don't know. This was quite a few years ago and I said, hold on a minute. Hold on. Let me go see if uh, I wanted to check first. I couldn't control this. But I want to see first were condoms legal. And then I said, in El Paso, once again, um, they're legal. You wouldn't always know it. But they were legal. Class, I'm not getting up on my high horse. So I said, you can. But then I told the students too, if you don't want to take a condom in regards to this presentation, you don't have to. But if you do, they're legal. We're not doing nothing wrong. Then I had another student who was doing an English writer one time and said, Mr. Welsh, I want to bring mead to class. Can I bring some Bass Dark Ale and give everybody a bottle of it? I said, Bass Dark Ale is kind of expensive. It was a small class. And then I said, well, I don't think, you know, we want to necessarily do that with this presentation. Because once again, um... You're supposed to be 21 to drink and we had some underage students in the class and then I could get fired they said mr. Welsh has people drinking in class right so we couldn't done that uh, so we didn't but the condoms were okay one time class and I, I, I'll share this and I'll move on where I went to my university as an undergraduate I ended up at Cal State Long Beach and they had class on campus they had a full-blown bar okay that was open like all the time so sometimes when you wanted to find some of the English professors you'd find them in the bar at uh, at Cal State Long Beach it was called the Daily 49er Tavern right on campus there's a couple of uh, English uh, professors I knew that were hitting it hard as teachers and then they'd stagger to class to go teach. Those were good days, class. That was a, a great, great university. It's gotten a lot harder to get into. It isn't one of the prestige universities, but it's my humble alma mater. California State University of Long Beach. Got a great education there, I feel. If I had to change it, would I have gone anyone else looking back? No. Would I have gone to my community college? Yes. Would I have gone to California State University, Long Beach? Yes. Would I have gone to my junior college called El Camino in the South Bay of Los Angeles County? Yes. Would I have gone to UTEP for my master's degree, my master's of fine arts degree? Yes. These are all fantastic schools, class. So, presentations keep us awake, keep us alive. Class. And then it tells us, once again, although those props aren't required, which I'm talking about now, students are encouraged to use them if their presentations will benefit from them. All oral presentation topics 
will be a will be approved ahead of time by the instructor during a one-on-one -on -one conference with the students. Okay. Now, all I want you to do is when you give me a pitch for the oral presentation, all it needs to be is one page in length, double spaced. Okay. One page in length, double spaced. Don't put a ton of time into these. Not now. Because right now you're just throwing out a pitch. So if, if say, two people, it hardly ever happens. I'll get you something close to your topic or maybe your exact topic, but it's after I approve it and sign off, then you'll go do your major research. So just look over these and topically, look at the title, pick one. Write up, once again, a one-page, dub, just double-spaced pitch for me on what you want to do and how you want to do it. Keep it light. And then, class, what I'll do is I'll read that pitch. <coughs> and then in a live conference that we're going to have, I'm going to talk about these dates. I'll approve it. Now, class, one of the things, when you send me these pitches... Remember that you're dealing with a college professor. Make them clean, make them tight, look over them as much as you can, edit them as much as you can, each sentence. There was a couple, the last time I took this class where I'm get these conferences, the students, I said, you know, I, and I don't want to do this. I'm like, this is sloppy. You turn me in some sloppy, almost illiterate work. I'm a college professor. Take your time. I'm only asking for a page. Get it tight. Look at your punctuation. Look at your proper nouns. Ask yourself, is this a run-on sentence? Is this an incomplete? As best as you can. I'm not here to beat anyone up. But once again, class, this is a university college level class. You know. Let's send out the best work that we can. I've read some good pitches too. Let me know that you're a college-level student. Let me know you're a university-level student, a sophomore level, okay? And then what you'll do is you're going to send, mark this down, class, on your calendar. Your due date to send in the pitch is February 19th. Just your pitch. Pick it out. Sign it up on your pitch. You're going to put the, once again, the title of it, which I've already done for you. You're going to put the date, and then you're going to give me the one page. And then, I'm going to have live conferences class. Live conferences on February 24th. Okay. Over Blackboard Collaborate. We're going to have them from noon to 2 p.m. And on that day, we'll just get on. It'll be live. You'll be on. I'll be on. Remember, noon to 2 p.m. And I'll send you a memo in regards to this when I send this out, which is going to be along with this video, which should uh, go out, you know, it's Saturday tonight or certainly tomorrow, Super Bowl Sunday. Live conferences, noon to 2 p.m. on the 24th. And then we'll have that all taken care of. Then, when I lecture again, class, we're going to go back to Swift, and we're going to move on to, once again, Voltaire and Candide. Okay. And we'll be going through those, and we'll be talking about those questions I gave you. I'm going to give you some next questions for Voltaire and Candide, but the good thing is, is we got some time for these conferences. Week 5, February 15th, 17th, coming up, conferences. Okay. But I've given you some time now. Remember, send in your pitch on the 19th. 24th, we'll have live conferences. Okay? So that's what's happening in this upcoming week. So I, I hope that helps, class. I think that will. I want you, you know, it's kind of interesting times. Kind of 
challenging times. We're doing the best that we can as students, the best that we can as professors. Once again, here's my annotated syllabus. Keep up with your readings. And once we get these conferences all set up, we'll be moving, you know, continue. We'll continue just to be moving one day at a time through the class, uh, getting through this semester one day at a time class. Very good. So I think that covered everything. Gave you a little overview. Once again, uh, this will come to you along with the memo, along with this video. And I think we should be in good shape. And then classes, we move through this. Any questions, you can hit me up over Blackboard messages. I'm certainly here to uh, answer uh, all of your questions and to help you. But I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Class, with that said, I'm going to let you go. Um, good luck tomorrow. Good luck this upcoming week. Once again, say, stay safe. Say, stay well. Stay strong in school. Once again, good luck, good luck, good luck, as the Irish say, and we'll see you next time. Okay, take care, class.